It is Fox Across America with Jimmy Fallon fired up in this hour. Why? Uh, because we have, uh, by all accounts, a congressional superstar in our midst, and she is joining us for a full hour. It wasn't really agreed upon. We just got her in the studio, barricaded the door, <laughs> and now she is here from the 3rd Congressional District of Florida. Kat Kamek is oh in the house. God. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Kat hey. Kamek, the studio audience, <laughs> just going bananas. I mean, the, you can barely hear us over the pyrotechnics. And, no, uh, I'm, I'm totally here against my will. Someone the, please send help. The non-consensual radio interview. <laughs> nice to see you. It's so good to see you. So, Kat, uh, for everybody listening uh, on 100 stations around the world, uh, the Fox News app, or wherever you might be watching us on Fox News, Kat is here uh, in studio. This is kind of our radio sleepless in Seattle because mm. we have talked over the phone several times. Yes. Uh, but our in-person meeting, not quite the top of the Empire State Building. Uh, it actually, <laughs> based on the decor of my studio, looks like we met inside a van that would promise you candy. <laughs> yes, it is. It is a little bit um, pedophile-ish. Um, I feel like <laughs> oh, we belong in Wait. maybe a, maybe like the the basement co- uh, comic book stores. You know, I don't know. <laughs> this is the deal. Do you drive a white van? I do, not anymore. Uh, <laughs> this was a licensing issue uh, more than anything else. Uh, but no, these you. I will have you know, this studio is adorned with the toys of my youth. That's why there's like a Millennium Falcon and a He-Man and all kinds of stuff going on over here, Cat Kamek. And basically what I was trying to do for people walking into this show who take life a little more seriously than you do was remind them to chill out. Like the guy's got his toys on the desk. (laughs) You don't have to come in here and run talking points. You could just be a person. One of the reasons I was so excited to have you on is you are a real person. Uh, you, I do consider you like a real person, like when I talk to you. Well, I that's what they tell me. Yeah, as, at, at HR. At HR. <laughs> really? like I'm a, allowed. It's a little too real, Kamek. <laughs> We're a little concerned over here. Roll but, it in. Keep, but, keep it in check. But no, as a superstar congressional representative, uh, congresswoman, um, uh, there are a lot of issues facing this country, mm-hmm. and I thought it would benefit if you and I kind of led the nation through a grown-up talk about a series of issues. But before we get into all of that, Kat Kamek, I have to know, you are here in New York because you were launching what today? Ooh. Ooh, so mm. I was here this morning launching our new leadership pack called American Grit Okay. with the intention and goal of electing the next class of members of Congress Whoa. that are blue collar, everyday mm. Americans. They've worked real jobs. Mm. I like to say that while I'm impressed with Ivy League degrees, I am more impressed with degrees from like, you know, the University of Hard Knocks or a Votech degree or, right. you know, people who have personality and experience and have experienced adversity in their life. There That's you what go. we're looking for. Whoa. Holy. So I was saying to you off the air, I would kind of fit that description were it not for the background check. But you said, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Congress. There are no background checks. I'm, have you seen who's serving? <laughs> <laughs> like Jimbo, just Congress is the plaque on the Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired, your poor. Just come on down. You'll oh, be it, here. It, if you have a pulse. Yeah, that, well, that's basically the requirement these well, days. That's really funny. Well, I wanted to say this really, really quickly. Um, the roles have been reversed in Washington because the Republican Party kind of is the party of the working class now. Which not, weird. Not kind of. We uh, are. No, no, no yeah. question. But, yeah. but you know, that wasn't always the narrative. But as a guy, again, who did drive a taxi for a long time and will probably be driving one again soon based on how this interview is going. Oh, uh, yeah. I kid. Cat <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be great. <laughs> Okay, Uh, I can tell you every one of like my grassroots pals now kind of in this moment where like gas prices are through the roof, Mm -hmm. they do feel like ignored, like they're getting yelled at, like, oh, I'll buy an electric car or just be mad at Putin. You're like, yeah, none of those two things pay for today's five dollar and 19 cent gallon of gas. So the fact that you actually have invested in the working man, the working woman, the working they, the working them, I think is greatly appreciated. Do you feel that appreciation coming back or is this the beginnings of the revolution. Now, I feel like we're somewhat in it already. I mean, it's pretty clear that Republicans largely are the party of the working class, right? If you are a Wall Street guy or gal, if you are somehow politically connected and, you know, belong to a country club, you you probably are a Democrat. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. And I mean, for me, I'm married to a firefighter. I'm a third generation commercial sandblaster. People don't grow up and say, ooh, that's a sexy, I want to be a a freaking sandblaster. I mean, (laughs) no one signs up for that. You've reached 970 (laughs) sandblaster. <laughs> what are you wearing? A mask, <laughs> protective gear. Can 
you talk slower? Continue. <laughs> so we're going after these types of people, including your 900 uh, work. Nine, uh, 900 yeah, I mean, they're working workers. class people, too. They, hey, man, you got to work hard for your money. <laughs> and uh, no judgment here. But, <laughs> you know, these are the people that are impacted most by big government. Yes. We're the ones that are actually filling up our own gas tanks. If you are in government for the last 40 years, like Biden or Pelosi, you haven't filled up your own gas tank in decades. No, no way. It's really easy to talk about these policies from the safety and comfort of armored vehicles. But when you actually are out there picking up groceries, trying to get your kids to school and participate in after school sports, make ends meet. If you're, heaven forbid, on a fixed income, you're really getting squeezed. Yep. People just have they've lost faith in the big government ideals that the Democrats have. And that's where conservatives have come in and said, listen. We are you, mm -hmm. and we are going to put policies in place that empower you, that make life better for you by getting government out of your way. It Whoa. really is that simple. Whoa, and the crowd goes wild. No, people <laughs> are behind it. Representative Kat Kamek is in studio if you just joined us. We're doing a full hour. Like, this is a grown-up radio hit right here. Oh, This is not, you know, call into the show, couple of yucks, I'm out of here. Two go in, only <laughs> one comes out. <laughs> only one's getting out a lot. <laughs> now, as a third-generation sandblaster, like, yes. you grew up in what? Like, just because I want to give you some background so everybody understands. Like I grew up on Long Island in Levittown. Mm -hmm. It was the biggest post-World War II settlement for American GIs returning home from war. It was the greatest generation. I did not know America that. was kind of the first suburb. Yeah. Uh, uh, William uh, Levitt, uh, who built it, um, and we grew up around a lot of veterans. Uh, a lot, I grew up around a lot of old men you should never make a sudden move around. <laughs> you get, like, knocked out in the backyard. So that's what happened to your face. Well, there's that. Yeah, Cat Kamek <laughs> taking shots at the champ. I love it. No, I love it. I usually pay a lot of money for this kind of talk. That's the one thing I keep saying about the gas tank. Uh, the gas station has become like a thinly veiled dominatrix. Because it takes all your money. It makes you feel terrible. Oh. It's like you don't have to go on Craigslist anymore. You can just go over to Exxon and get yelled there at by go. Mrs. 93 Octane. Yeah, and you keep coming back. But I <laughs> do you ever. But I so I grew up in that environment in Levittown, which is like very patriotic. Yes. Okay, I'm 44. Yes. So I grew up in, in a version of America that was America. Like everybody was in on the yeah. joke. Hey, we're in America. We're like so lucky. Like mm -hmm. we really are, and it was like an amazing thing. And you had my, flags out front that, of every house. Everywhere. Yes. Now that's considered like aggressive, which is yes. we'll get into it. But it's funny, in nineteen eighty six they had unveiled the new refurbished Statue of Liberty. Mm -hmm. And it was like the biggest thing that happened to us in fourth grade. For it was a big year for me, fourth grade. It was a happening year. They unveiled Lady Liberty, uh, which was funny because she had scaffolding around her for two years, mm -hmm. you know. So it was weird that all of those construction men who whistled at women were now like on this giant woman for like two years <laughs> but then they took down the scaffolding and we had the Statue of Liberty and we were like yeah like we were into it Reagan showed up he spoke so like I was I this grew up America yes I grew up on like yes. maximum strength America not not America 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 yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, this is Fox Across America. We got exactly. an apostrophe in there. <laughs> so, did you grow up in this, or did you like find Jesus later in the service? Like, what are you? What is your situation? So, it, it was actually interesting. I tell people all the time. You know, my mom actually was a Democrat. Okay, I uh, grew up daughter of a single mom, mm -hmm. but my mom was never overtly political. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. we were too busy. You know. <laughs> doing things and running a business and trying to survive, you know? Fanciest euphemism for day drinking I've ever heard, but continue. <laughs> no, we were doing things. We were doing things. Wow. <laughs> Don't judge me. Um, no, the, you know, when you're growing up, we grew up on a small cattle ranch. I was a 4-H kid, but, you know, we didn't have a lot of money or anything. We were, you know, lower, lower middle class. And, okay. you know, so we just knew what it was to work. I took my first steps as a kid, literally as a baby, mm -hmm. on a job site. And, you you know, I spent my my youth on the weekends and and after school, you know, helping my mom on job sites, whether it was sandblasting uh, uh, on a big portable job like a, a graffiti wall or uh -huh. a stadium or the smaller jobs where we were literally sandblasting uh, antique cars. Wow. You know, those were the things that I grew up doing. Real but life. When you're in the process of running a business, a small business, you don't realize it, but you're naturally being conditioned to dislike government. So EPA and OSHA and DOL, these inspectors are constantly coming in. I'm filling out quarterly tax documents, you know, as a as a young teenager. I'm starting to get involved in the business and understand that none of the things that government has put in place 
is designed to make workers safer, Mm -hmm. customers safer or happier. It's all just burdensome red tape. And so I was naturally being conditioned to be a conservative. Mm -hmm. But it really came to a head in April of 2011. Mm -hmm. We got a phone call. I'm in the last year of my college experience, first in my family to go to college. And we find out that we are losing our ranch, our home. Mm -hmm. We had 23 days to evict. And at the time, you know, you didn't, we didn't have anything, you know, it was the, the market had crashed. Everything was terrible. We're, we're broke as you can imagine, like just broke, broke, broke. We put everything we owned into horse trailers and I had enough money for one night at La Quinta on the Whoa. side of the highway. Hey, nobody likes a show off, pal. I know, Hold I know, I know. We live in fancy now. <laughs> and, um, after that, I moved my mom and I into an extended stay motel that oh, was wow. pay by the week, mm-hmm. which I believe at the time it was 127 or t- $129 a week so you can imagine we were living large <laughs> balling right balling <laughs> absolutely balling at the crack house um <laughs> and you're homeless and i started doing my homework like trying to understand what the hell happened mm-hmm. and it came out that there had been a piece of legislation in washington 1800 page bill republicans and democrats had voted for it but not a single one of them had bothered to read it because uh-huh. if they had, they would have seen that the language actually incentivized the big banks oh, wow. to push people out of their homes because they were going to get a tax credit for the interest on the loan. So why in the heck would any bank wait 30 years to get the completion of the loan? They were getting no pay- they were getting it then. OK, oh, that's, yeah. that's insanity. But that is, again, the government that's government showing uh, just a brazen indifference to the little person, which in this case was you, Kat Kamek, who is in studio right now here on Fox Across America. And Jimmy is terrified. I'm not. I'm not. I'm actually OK. Listen, you understand, <laughs> Kat. I have like I've met people from other planets. I mean, I'm a cab driver. I've seen things. <laughs> Hobbits. Anything you can think of. Do you know I once drove a woman to Brooklyn who talked to me with a sock puppet on each hand for a 30-minute ride? I would have loved to have been in that car. <laughs> in, in weird ways, I feel like you were. <laughs> like, I was oh the God, woman. I thought the you looked familiar, Kamek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you were doing back then. That was Bertha and Beulah, okay, if you remember <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and have you denigrate them. <laughs> you can't. Yeah, do you get in trouble for using the ro- wrong pronouns for sock puppets? I mean, what a dumb time to be alive. Uh, but we're going to straighten it out. 